At Seattle's always busy Pike's Place Market, hello, hello. their motto is, you buy it, we'll fly it. And that's just where our catch of the day came from for today's lesson on poaching. I'll teach you all you need to know to poach eggs, chicken breasts, and salmon. Perfect for entertaining a crowd. Poaching is to submerge foods fully or partially in barely simmering liquid. And since this is a wet cooking method that requires little, if any, fat, the results are exceptionally moist and healthy. So let's start with poaching eggs. And I've invited my friend and chef, Pierre Shedlin, to show us how he poaches eggs. So Pierre, I'm so Hi, glad that you're here. Definitely. Um, why don't we start with the quail's eggs? Because uh, this is a... I love the quail's eggs on toast, and I love how you do quail's eggs, and you do them all at once, which or is one. scary and interesting at the but, same time. But very simple. Very simple, very simple. Yeah. Now, these are very beautiful, hard-shelled little eggs with small yolks and small whites. Exactly. And there's a trick to opening them, too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You can't really crack it on the edge of a bowl you successfully. You can't, because the, the skin inside is much, much firmer I than see. a regular egg. Okay. So you have to go with a serrated knife. Okay, serrated knife, and just And cut? taking the smallest part on the, on the bottom, because so the egg yolk goes on the bottom, and you're not going to hurt it when you saw through the, the shell. Oh, it just saws right very easily. Oh, very easily. And so you can do about 18 to 25 eggs? Exactly. Oh, okay. At a time. Then and another way to do it is to, uh, if you don't want... Show, show to, that one too. Exactly. Wait, you do it like that. Just put your knife. Secure. Just, okay. But just before you touch any eggs, some of them might be already broken or soft. Be careful. So be careful because they would break on a time. All done. So about 30 eggs. 30 eggs. Okay, so now so, the water has so the, to be boiling rapidly. Exactly. The boil helps as well to give some, uh, to help the eggs to coagulate as fast as possible. And the movement of the boil helps to create the, the nice shape okay. of the eggs. So what about vinegar? Adding vinegar definitely helps uh, to coagulate the white as it well. It does. Use the less expensive one because you're going to discard the liquid. Okay. So that's approximately a quarter cup of uh, vinegar okay. done here. Yeah. Now, this is very exciting. <laughs> now, also, have a bowl of iced water with a strainer set in the ice because you're going to immediately put those eggs into there. Absolutely, right? to stop the cooking okay. as well. So I would say that's pretty much boiling now, That's right? boiling now, yes. exactly. So now we're just going to give a moment. I'm going to add the egg like that. And we are not even going to touch it now. So don't touch it. Don't touch it every all. The white is going to go around the egg. And this is not the eggs. That's the egg white, because yeah. the egg white is, is, you have two parts in egg white, the oh. solid one and the liquid okay. white. Don't add uh, salt to your poaching liquid. Mm -hmm. um, that's another rule, because it causes the egg whites to break. To break. Exactly. Right. Then once the egg, you have 30 seconds, the eggs start to coagulate together, and they are a little bit less fragile as well. So oh, you have right. a little idea. Okay. So There are a lot of eggs in here. The, oh, they're lovely. Get there, so now. So they're completely encased in their white, in, their in whites, the albumin. Absolutely. And they will be tasty and tender and just cooked and enough. Just cooked enough. You want them nice and soft. Okay. Now we have to take each of them and separate the excess white. Mm hmm. So don't worry about the excess white. Oh, you can eat it as well. It's definitely comestible. Okay. So. And they are so cute and, and so fast. This is what's so amazing about this method of poaching eggs. They just look like little pearls, mm -hmm. beautiful golden pearls. And you can trim it with a little scissor. Mm -hmm. And not one has broken, not one no. is not coated, which is very, very nice. They have all done their thing. And then you like to serve it with the green caviar? Oh, you can serve them on a, on a toast with green caviar and wasabi, or we can serve them just with regular caviar as well. It would work just as well. So here's some little toast. And that's the rest of the egg. So would you, put the, would you put caviar on the toast first? It's on top. Okay. Just like mm -hmm. that? Yeah, absolutely. And a little dollop of... And a little dollop of caviar on top. Okay, so we'll make a little plate of those, and, and it tastes so good with the wasabi, doesn't oh, definitely. it? Definitely. And they stay very nicely. What a beautiful hors d'oeuvre. Poached quail's eggs, not very difficult to make. 
and so quick. So now we have to do the large Let's eggs. Let's do the large eggs. So different, okay. with the same process, we can do it again, we can do it in a shallow water or in a higher water. Now the same thing, vinegar. The but vinegar, yeah. Like how much? A tablespoon like that, is that enough? A little bit more. More vinegar you put, more it's going to help to, to stick the white together. So and do cool. eggs all the same size? You can do the eggs, yep. So we can braid them. Now, fresh mm -hmm. eggs or a couple day old eggs? Fresher the eggs is, more difficult it is to push because the, the, the white is not completely surrounding the, the yellow now. So now we have boiling water. Again, uh, with vinegar, and we're just going to add the, the eggs uh, Put it inside, one after the other. You might just want to help a little bit. Yeah, I find if you roll them over, it really does help yeah, keep their it, shape. It does, just particularly because it's in a shallow pan as well. If you would do it in a longer pan, you want just to help at the beginning. What you want is the perfect yolk encased it's in the, the perfect, perfect white, as even as possible. Good so sir. you keep it boiling. And that's a matter of, so we just put them in, so it's certainly going to be a matter of a minute, a minute and a half. Okay. Go. That looks good. And once they firm up in the cold water, you can trim Definitely. off all that excess white. Mm -hmm. And trim with a scissor or a sharp knife. And I use just white, old white bread as a sponge like that to take up the excess water. water. And if someone has ordered one or two, a good whole grain toast, some salt and freshly ground pepper. And if you want to see the egg yolk, just cut the egg a little bit and it is perfect, just the way you want it. No reason not to serve poached eggs to the crowd. Thank you, Pierre. This pleasure. is great. Simple, easy, straightforward method for poaching eggs. Hen's eggs or quail's eggs. Thanks. Pleasure. It's good. Poaching chicken breasts on the bone results, I think, in the most flavorful and juicy meat. Uh, let me show you how it can be used in a few of my favorite dishes. Poached chicken is versatile. And uh, we are making the broth. We're going to, these are two very beautiful bone in, skin on chicken breasts. Let's put that into the cool water. And one carrot, one stalk of celery, a couple sprigs of parsley, a couple sprigs of thyme, and uh, two bay leaves. I love bay leaves. And a little bit of black peppercorn and one teaspoon of salt in the water. We're not using lemon, we're not using wine. We just want a flavorful, lovely chicken breast. You bring this to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, and heat the water to keep it at around 170 to 180 degrees. And the internal temperature of the chicken should read 160 degrees when done. Approximately 15 to 18 minutes. So the chicken is 160 degrees in the thickest part. Put the chicken in a bowl large enough for it to sit in the bottom and pour the poaching liquid right through a strainer over the chicken and let it cool in the broth. This will result in the most tender chicken. Let it sit out until it cools and put it in the fridge just like this. And when it's cool enough, you can peel it and take it off the bone. So now the chicken has cooled in the broth. Peel the chicken breast, take the skin off, and here is a beautiful breast. You can shred the chicken if you like. You can cut it into cubes. And I have a beautiful fresh cob salad with hard-boiled eggs, blue cheese, tomatoes, avocado, a freshly cooked bacon on a bit of romaine lettuce, and you can just cube one of the breasts of chicken or slice it. It's juicy, it's tasty, it's very, very fresh, and it looks very good. And then just put a stripe of this on that platter. Every single thing is just delightfully good. So there's the cob salad all done. Oh, 
Does that look good? Now, my other favorite way to serve poached chicken is on a sandwich, just a chicken sandwich with sliced tomato. Um, and so slice the chicken very thinly across the grain. This Japanese cleaver works wonders. And a little homemade mayonnaise, of course. And this is a country white bread. Some white chicken like this, overlapping layers. Mm, does that look good? Don't forget a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, white pepper. And then of course, some tomatoes, some crispy garden lettuce. Of course, you could make this into a BLTC or you could make it into a wonderful club sandwich. Yeah, that looks good and put the top on and you can cut this in half. Now's the time to use those silver toothpicks that you got for a wedding present to hold the two sides of the sandwich together, but I think it'll stay. So they are wonderful fresh chicken sandwich. And equally impressive is a whole beefsteak tomato hollowed out and filled with a tarragon chicken salad made, of course, with homemade mayonnaise. All three of these are terrific for uh, warm weather, uh, but for me, they're good any time of year, as long as you can get great tomatoes. And the method is just a little bit different when you're poaching fish or shellfish. Uh, we're going to use a court bouillon to poach a large salmon and uh, also to poach a salmon steaks. Uh, court bouillon means short broth and it's just simply flavored with carrots and celery and lemon, special spices like peppercorns, bay leaf and thyme. So right now I'd like to show you how to poach salmon steaks. I'm going to make a simple aromatic hot water bath for the salmon. And the uh, first thing I want to do is cut up the white part of a leek and cut into quarter inch slices. If it's a light colored fish, you don't want anything too strong in the water. So we're just going to use this part. Now to make sure that the leek does not have any dirt in it, and leeks are notorious for hiding little grains of dirt underneath the leaves. Sometimes when you pull off a leaf, see the little bit of dirt here? So you wanna make sure you don't get any of that dirt or grit in which the leek was grown in your bouillon, see that? There's not a lot, but there's just enough to be gritty. Now I'm just taking all the way up till it starts to turn dark green. There. So all of this goes into the water. Let it just steep a little bit and all the grit will fall to the bottom. This, of course, gets washed and into your stock pot. Don't throw that away. It's so valuable. Um, slice the lemon about the same thickness as your leek a little less than a quarter of an inch. And I oftentimes use lemon instead of wine in my court bouillon. A lot of recipes do call for wine and you can use a nice dry white wine, but I really prefer the taste of lemon with salmon. And cut your celery into small pieces and put that in and carrots. The more surface on your carrots, the uh, quarter turning these carrots, the better you'll get a lot of flavor out of the carrot. Two carrots would be good for the broth. I'm not using any onion, I'm using leek because it's a little bit milder tasting and actually has a more complex flavor. About a half a teaspoon of peppercorns. You could use white or black, some thyme, just put that into the water, and two bay leaves. Bring this to a boil and simmer it for about 30 minutes. Now I'm just taking the leeks out of the water, adding that to the pot. Now the goal is to avoid overpowering the food that's going to be poached. So this flavorful but mild short broth will do just that. So don't use strong herbs like uh, rosemary or sage or uh, cilantro. Too strong, I think, for a delicate fish like a salmon. So 30 minutes and you're ready to start poaching your fish.
Now these are beautiful salmon steaks. I have four of them. I have a pan in which they will all fit in one layer, just far enough apart so that the water circulates around them. So season very lightly with salt. So here, just put it in the pan. And then ladle in your poaching liquid. Mm. And the liquid this is so aromatic. It really, really smells delicious. Make sure the fish is completely covered. That's called a deep poach. And depending on the thickness of the fish, you will poach for between five and eight minutes. Oh, and I'm gonna test the water. It should be 160 degrees. There it is going up. Almost there, 160 degrees. So continue to poach and you cook until the fish is opaque. As I said, between five and eight minutes. And so now, five minutes, these are done. Lift your steaks right out onto a piece of parchment paper. Mm, they are so beautiful. And if you're going to serve these hot, you'll put these right onto a serving platter and serve your guests or plate it up. It's okay to serve it just like this, but I prefer doing it a little bit fancier. And uh, you can loosen the skin with a fork and take it around like this. See how nicely it comes off? It's so much fun to do this. The skin just comes right off and it just makes it look a little prettier and poached skin is not as tasty as grilled skin. Twirl it around like that, all the way around the perimeter of the steak, so there. And then another thing that you could do before serving is remove this part of the backbone. I just think this looks very nice. Just lift this up and put it on your platter. And I love warm salmon like this with lemon, dill, and garnish with lemon wedges and sprigs of fresh dill. And here you have a meal in less than an hour that's healthy, nutritious, and beautiful. Now here is an impressive sight, poaching an entire whole salmon. And when poaching a large whole fish, you need to place it in a cool liquid first then heat it slowly until the liquid reaches 160 degrees. And then you poach it for approximately seven minutes per inch. Now take your scissors and cut off the fins that are on the bottom. And now this salmon comes from Seattle um, and it is an Alaskan king salmon. Make sure that your fishmonger has scaled the fish and taken out the gills. See how nice and clean it is in here. And also, of course, gutted the fish. Beautiful, deep red flesh. I love salmon like this. And the dorsal fin. This one does not have a very large dorsal fin, but cut that off. Leave the tail on because that's part of the presentation. And of course, leave the head on too. I think we have one more fin. Right here. This is the granddaddy of all poachers. I've had this poacher, I don't know, for how long? Ever since I was catering and doing giant striped bass. And this poacher will hold four batches of the poaching liquid. So we've made the poaching liquid with the lemon, the carrots, the leeks, and the celery four times. The vegetables are on the bottom. Then goes the poaching rack. This is a very nice way because you can pick the fish out without the fish breaking. You have to have a rack in your poacher. And then put your beautiful fish right on the rack and cover it with cold poaching liquid, cold court bouillon. We've made this yesterday and chilled it. And you want to bring the liquid up to the top of the fish just so that it is fully submerged. Now turn your heat on, sort of medium high. So I'm using two burners. Now watch the poaching liquid and you can just use a thermometer like this, submerged in the liquid, and that should read 160 degrees. Cover the fish with the cover of the pan. Look at this impressive cover, very impressive. And 
the fish itself should read 130 degrees when done. So now about 40 minutes to come to 160 degree liquid. Then another 30 minutes, maybe a little less, to come to 130 degrees in the fish. Now put this thermometer right into the fish. And this will stay out, and I've set it for 129 degrees because it jumps to 131 for some reason, it won't stay at 130. So 129 is close enough. That's going to take all together about an hour and a quarter. So it's not so difficult to poach a whole fish, and the result is certainly absolutely worth it. If you put the fish in and added hot liquid, it would cook on the outside before it cooks on the inside. So that's why uh, we are doing it this way, starting it in the cool liquid. So be very careful, take your time, and you will get the perfect fish. So the salmon is, I think, perfectly poached. It has sat in the cork bouillon for one hour, and it looks so lovely. And it's not so hot now that you can't handle it. So we're just taking it out of the cork bouillon on the rack onto a parchment-covered sheet. You can move your giant poaching pot off to the side. I find it easier to peel it and uh, get it ready for dressing um, while it's still warm. So be very, very gentle. Slide it off the tray like that. Now I'll move it over here and show you how to remove the skin. You can go down the back very carefully with the point of a knife and lift off the skin. See how it comes off? very easily. And I would suggest, actually, for presentation, you can do one side. I think to make sure it stays well together, I am just going to do the top half. Mm. Because you can serve it all from this side and not flip it over on a buffet. You just remove the backbone the skin. There is a part of the backbone right here too and that dorsal fin which you can pull out. Isn't that a beautiful fish? An Alaskan king salmon like this is always caught wild. Um, it is not farmed. It is a very oily, delicious fish. So beautifully succulent. Very, very good for you. And there, it's nicely clean. And so the salmon is very, very tender. To decorate, I have long cucumber slices, and this will go around the salmon like this for decoration, like that. I'm gonna do stripes all the way down the back, and I'm gonna serve it right on this lovely French breadboard. You can use big offset spatulas like this. There. And now to decorate. Take your cucumber slices, and this can be done on a mandolin, just slice along the whole length of a cucumber, make a beautiful collar. It's so pretty. And when you get down towards the tail end, cut the cucumber in shorter pieces. And this is what will go on your buffet with a lovely sauce. This is a watercress caper sour cream mayonnaise sauce. Very delicious. Some watercress. I love watercress. It has a nice pungent spiciness to it. And of course, you can line up some lemon wedges and everyone can have one with a serving of the salmon. So keep the salmon uh, chilled until you're ready to serve it. And remember, poaching doesn't mean that your food has to be bland or uninteresting. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson for delectable poached food. Thanks for watching Martha's Cooking School. I'll see you next lesson.